On this day, the 7th of February, 1102, the birth of Empress Matilda. One of the most important, influential and powerful women of the 12th century, Matilda's date of birth isn't entirely certain, but was probably on this day, the 7th of February, in 1102. The first child of Henry I and his wife Queen Matilda, who was also known as Edith, Matilda had an impressive pedigree. Henry was the youngest son of William the Conqueror and had snatched the throne on the death of his brother William Rufus, despite the better claim of his oldest brother Robert. Edith Matilda was the daughter of King Malcolm III of Scotland and Margaret of Scotland, who had become a saint. Margaret was a granddaughter of Edmund Ironside and therefore a descendant of Alfred the Great. Henry married her quickly after he became king to add some Anglo-Saxon House of Wessex pedigree to his kingship. Matilda therefore represented the joining of Norman and Anglo-Saxon ancestry. The following year, Matilda gained a little brother, William Adeline. Despite having more recorded illegitimate children than any other English or British monarch, at least 23, Henry I had only two legitimate children. Matilda became a valuable marriage prospect and Henry was thrilled to receive an approach from Henry V, Holy Roman Emperor. In February 1110, the eight-year-old Matilda was packed off to Germany to marry the 25-year-old Emperor. Her new husband was kind to her and saw to it that she received an extensive education to prepare her for her future role in the Empire. Henry V was constantly at odds with the Pope and when he forced his way to a coronation in Rome, it was deemed illegitimate. When he finally had it done without impediment, Matilda wasn't with him to be crowned Empress as well. Despite this, she would use that title for the rest of her life, refusing to give up the prestige of an imperial rank. In 1120, things in England changed dramatically. Matilda's brother William was killed in the White Ship disaster during a crossing of the Channel. Matilda's recently widowed father was left with a serious problem. For all his illegitimate offspring, he now had no legitimate son to succeed him. He married again quickly, but began to extract oaths from his barons that they would recognise and support his daughter Matilda as his heir. When her husband died in 1125, Matilda returned to England and Henry, still lacking a legitimate son, continued to push her as his heir. With increasing threats to the southern border of Normandy from neighbouring Anjou, Henry arranged a marriage for his daughter to Geoffrey, the son of Falk, Count of Anjou. Matilda was 26 and Geoffrey was just 15. She really wasn't very happy. She refused to take the title Countess of Anjou when Geoffrey's father gave his son the title and left for the Holy Land. The marriage had a rocky start and Matilda left Geoffrey to return to her father's court. Henry eventually sent his daughter back and was happy when she gave him a grandson, also named Henry, who he might have hoped would leapfrog the tricky succession of female rule and succeed him. Pretty soon though, Henry had fallen out with his daughter and son-in-law. When he died in 1135, they were in open conflict and in the aftermath, Henry's nephew, Matilda's cousin, Stephen of Blois, swooped in and had himself crowned king. Matilda would spend much of the next 19 years pressing her claims in papal courts and then in person in England. In 1141, she would come close to being crowned after Stephen was captured at the Battle of Lincoln. She planned to be known as the Lady of the English, a title that harked back to Anglo-Saxon female rulers and deftly avoided the problems of using the title Queen, which was generally understood to be the wife of a king rather than a female ruler. Matilda was driven out of London just before she could be crowned. Most of the problem, demonstrated by the bashing she took from chroniclers, was that she was female and men had no desire to be ruled by a woman. She also made a daring escape from Oxford Castle when Stephen besieged her there, sneaking out in a white cloak during a snowstorm, crossing the frozen Thames and picking her way through Stephen's camp until she reached safety. She changed her tactics shortly after this and began to make sure that the claim was kept alive on behalf of her oldest son, Henry. By the time she died in 1167, aged 65, Matilda's son was King of England, Duke of Normandy, Count of Anjou and Duke of Aquitaine. He ruled an immense group of lands and looked to have founded one of Europe's most powerful dynasties. She had represented him in Normandy for years, based at Rouen, and her son's direct male descendants would rule England for three centuries more as the Plantagenet dynasty. A strong, driven woman who never gave up, the indomitable Matilda was born on this day in 1102.